I may say it's Tuesday, welcome to Europe Pocket News, where we will unavoidably talk about the Constitution, the state of Europe and its politicians. So let's go. Well, you might have caught a glimpse in Sunday newspaper of the tired journalists snoozing in the European Parliament in the early hours of the morning. As it wasn't till 4am that EU leaders came to an agreement on a reform treaty. And it affects us all because the new rules will come into play in our 27 states. Thumbs up were given to eight specific points. The first being the word constitution. From now on, we will only refer to it as the constitutional treaty. The second, the creation of a long-term president. The third, the creation of a head of foreign affairs. The fourth, the postponing of the new voting system till 2014. The fifth, fewer national veto powers. The sixth, more powers for the European Parliament, the seventh, a fundamental bill of rights, and the eighth, that there will be no national symbols or hymns. The new constitutional treaty hopes to be finalised by the end of this year, preserving most of the concept of the planned EU constitution that was rejected by voters in 2005. Now that the much anticipated European summit is done and dusted, what is the next challenge for Europe? I reckon the next thing should be to settle a date where all of us can vote to say whether or not we really want a new constitutional treaty. Since the summit, the heads of our member states have highlighted some interesting facts. For example, the majority of the Danes, as in 70%, support the idea of a referendum, according to a study by Synovate Vister. Only 19% don't feel it's necessary, and 11% are indifferent. And the Danes aren't the only ones speaking up. Now the UK Conservative opposition has insisted on the presence of a referendum, just like for Nice, Amsterdam and Maastricht. What will happen now, if after the semi-success of the summit, the citizens of our 27 member states say no? If Europe had a page on Facebook, the smiling charismatic face of Tony Blair would be altered tomorrow and replaced with the introverted apprehensive reflection of 57-year-old Glaswegian Gordon Brown. The just-crowned Labour leader will commence his new political era tomorrow, and if his enthusiastic inauguration speech is anything to go by, he will introduce a lot of change. Changes to do with insecurity, changes from old policies, but with the use of much soul. Blair showed his soul when he called his companion a friend for over 20 years, and from today the leader of our party. And indeed when Brown commenced his political career in 1983, the two of them shared an unventilated office. While the outgoing British Prime Minister waits confirmation on a new international role as a Middle East mediator, Brown alludes to Britain as a country of rising aspiration and ensures the government will function for the people. He's ready to serve. Must be a strange feeling. Brown will go to bed tonight, but when he wakes up, instead of his shoes, he put on those of Tony Blair. Hundreds of policemen are patrolling the beaches of the Polish Baltic coast to catch and capture any women disobeying the law by sunbathing topless. Sounds ridiculous, but it's true. And the law exists since the Polish era of communism, but they're only applying it now. So if you're on a Polish beach, watch out, because the fine is 25 euros for being half naked. And finally, did you hear about Lydia Playfoot? Who was banned from wearing her purity ring at school? A member of the group of Christians in West Sussex, the ring is engraved with a biblical verse as a sign of their belief in no sex till marriage. And fair enough, if her schoolmates are allowed to wear their headscarves, why shouldn't she be allowed to show her identity? So the teenager has gone to the High Court under Article 9 of Breach of Human Rights. Well, that's all for today, but I'll be back tomorrow with lots more Euro Pocket News. So I'll see you here. Bye!